First episode in the new year, 2021. The US has a new president. A lot of things have changed. And unfortunately, a lot of things are still the same. Nevertheless, this is episode, I believe, 32. And we covered a lot of ground in the previous episode. So I thought it was time to talk about money. And so that you don't just have to look at this face, I thought I'll invite a very special guest. And it is the one and only Peter Hurley. Hey everyone, Stefan here. I hope you're doing well. As I mentioned in the intro, this episode will not just be this face, but we'll also have with us Mr. Peter Hurley. And as soon as he connects, we'll of course jump into that conversation. Now, today's subject is money. How and what should you charge as a photographer? Now, that's a very tricky thing and there's a lot of I guess, factors that go into this. Number one, of course, is location. If you are in New York, in LA, in Paris, in London, you can charge a lot more than if you are living somewhere out in the Wops. As example, I'm on the Gold Coast in Australia and we're at least, I would say, you know, a third cheaper than in the bigger cities like Melbourne and Sydney. And even those are cheaper than London and New York. That's just how it is. How to find out how much it is? Well, I guess we all have to do our due diligence and do some research. The easiest way is to go to other photographers' websites, have a look at their prices, and you quickly get a good feeling of what other people charge. Now, I'm not saying that's what you have to charge, but it gets you a good baseline or an understanding of where your special niche of photography lies and what others in that niche are charging. Then, of course, you have to do a little bit of maths. I know, boring, sorry, but you have to understand what your cost of doing business is. It starts with, do you rent a studio? If so, what does that cost you every week or every month? If you just rent it once in a while, well, add it up what you spend over the year. Then camera gear. You're probably subscribed to, I don't know, Adobe Photography, Package, Photoshop, whatever it may be. That costs you money every month. If you have a run a website, it costs you domain registration, it costs you hosting. Then you have camera gear. How much money do you spend every year on new gear, on lights, on lenses, on camera bodies? Add it all up. Then on top, do you insure your gear? What happens if something falls down, if something is stolen? Do you insure yourself, public liability, and so on and so forth? Add it all up, divide it by 12, and then you know how much money you have to make without any profit, just so that you are staying in business. That's a simple calculation you can do yourself. And then it's a question of how much money do you want to make? How much money after all this do you want to take home to, if you do this as a hobby, maybe buy the next lens or, you know, just fill up the little bucket for the beers on the weekend. That's entirely up to you. Once you've done this, don't forget the tax man because he will take a good share as well. Now, I'm not saying you have to charge, by no means, but if you think about it, you're creating a service for other people, and that has value. Then over time, you develop a style that has value. So you're creating something that means a lot to the people that you produce it for. So that should cost some money, at least, at the very least, it should cover your costs. So let's say you're approached by a young woman, good looking, and she asks you for some portraits. Should you charge? Well, if you're a professional, of course, you go through your calculation, you know what you need to charge, you know what you're worth, you know what you want to take home, you know how much the tax man takes from you, and then you add you know, you're 30% on top of whatever so that you actually make some profit and you have money to buy the yogurt at the supermarket. Because, hey, at the end of the day, we all have to live. 
If, however, you do this as a hobby, let's say you work at the bank throughout the week and you are a weekend warrior and you love to shoot for fun. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Nevertheless, you still have to show that you have certain values. Now, the way I do it, if I then decide to shoot for free, it's never really for free. What I mean with that is, let's say I approach someone and I want to try out new things. I bought some new lights and I want to figure out how they exactly work. I wouldn't do that with a paying customer. Once I have a paying customer in front of me, be it commercial or private, doesn't matter. I want to make sure I nail it. I want to make sure I know all my gear in and out. Now, to test it out or to create a new body of work, I might invite people to join me for a collaboration. Nevertheless, I want to make sure that they understand that my services have a value. So what I do is I send them a performer invoice before our shoot. Let's say it says $800 for a two hour portrait session. And then I put a discount in $800. So the performer invoice, they don't have to pay anything, but they understand that they are getting value. Even though we don't pay each other, I don't pay the model, she doesn't pay me. Nevertheless, they understand that there is real value, even though we don't exchange a dollar. That can very often help to take discussions out of the way. Because let's be clear, if someone walks into your studio and you shoot, let's say, for an hour, after that hour, that subject, man, female, doesn't matter, leaves the studio and their work is done. Your work, however, has just begun. You now have to sort through all the images. You probably select some, you retouch some, you deliver them. And not to forget the investment that you made into lights, cameras, experience, the many years that you worked to create a certain style. So there's a lot more involved than just one hour. So should you charge by the hour? No, you shouldn't. You should create packages. Now, don't call them packages because a package sounds like UPS. You rip it open and it's done. I will call them collection, something open. So after the shoot, should you now give those photos away for free? I don't think so. I think every single photo has a value. Now, again, if you shoot for free, performer invoice and all, well, there is still a value to every single picture you produce. So if you then want to charge a small amount for a print or a small amount per picture, that's entirely up to you. If you want to send those photos for free, do the same thing again as you've done with the session. Put on a price that you believe your photo is worth and then discount it to down to zero if you like. Send that piece of paper, that PDF, together with the link to the photos so that people understand there is a real value to the photos. And if they would have booked you, that's what they would have paid. And of course, if it is a paid shoot, you do exactly the same thing. Think in two ways. Your time during a photo shoot and the cost that it takes to produce that photo afterwards. If you retouch it yourself, it's your hours. If you would hire someone who retouches, well, that would cost you money too. Somehow this needs to be covered. So I usually have two invoices or two quotes beforehand. One is the actual session, which outlines exactly what we're going to do, what the plan is and the cost. And then we have a second one, which depends on how many pictures are picked, how many pictures need to be retouched, how many pictures will be delivered and in what format. And that is for private customers. Now, once you go into the commercial world, we'll talk very different things. We talk about licensing fees. Where is a photo used? Magazines, online, is it print or digital? And then for how long? 
So this is a subject to or a subject for another day. Now, oh, there he is, Mr. Peter Hurley. I'm here. Brilliant. <laughs> now, if you lived under a rock and you don't know who this man is, let me introduce you to Peter quickly. He is the number one headshot photographer in the world, or one of the top headshot photographers in the world. But that alone wouldn't do him justice. He's a brilliant portrait photographer. And on top, he's uh, an amazing educator as well, together with his headshot crew. Does that about sum it up? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> I started as a portrait photographer. I was never thinking about headshots. So I, uh, you know, I started, I was a model. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm my name's Peter Hurley. I'm a headshot and portrait photographer. I'm based in New York City, which is a little crazy these days, actually. Uh, but we're getting through it. And, um, and I've got my studio here. And I uh, have been shooting for about picked up a camera in 2000 so i'm 20 over 20 years into it now and uh you know i was a model at the time when i got a camera so when i started shooting i started shooting my friends that were models and i never i wasn't even doing hedge i was doing like portraits and full body three quarters and then i would get up close but i was never like doing it as a like maybe a front of a comp card or something and um and then one of them was acting and he said hey i need a headshot I was like, I can do that. Just look in the camera. And then I realized how difficult it was because they get really blank. But anyway, so then it, then it kind of took me off in a tangent and I, and I went that way. Um, so it was, it's been a ride and uh, I feel very fortunate. I picked up a camera. So it's uh, it's been enjoyable the whole time. I've been growing it and now I'm, you know, got this global presence. I got sponsored by Canon and travel all over the world teaching headshot photography. Uh, I'm the founder of the Headshot Crew, which is my coaching platform and it's a referral engine for headshot photographers i actually have some associates down under and uh who help me out with with the work that i'm doing so it's kind of cool that sounds awesome now in my intro before you joined i mentioned that there is a big difference of course between being in new york or la or paris or being out in the wops somewhere so prices of course are very different so how do you price yourself do you go by hours do you uh, go by collections how do you approach pricing well i mean i kind of do it i kind of do it by time a little bit i have i mean over the years so it's been it, pricing's constantly in flux so you're always trying to figure out how to make more for your business so i'm always constantly uh trying different things and, and changing it and doing little tweaks, tweaks and hopefully increasing uh, the rate as I go. Uh, I have increased, I've decreased on occasion, I've, uh, which is rare. Um, it's based on the market where I believe I fit in the market. Um, also as an, as an art form, uh, what are they paying for? Are they paying for my 20 years of experience? Are they paying to have a Peter Hurley headshot? It's, it's that kind of thing. So my packages and what, what I charge here in New York are obviously um, probably different. I'm probably one of the most expensive headshot photographers in the world and um, well worth it. But it had to get there. It had to start somewhere and I had to get there. Uh, I, I guess I'll go through the story and then get to where I am now. Um, when I was modeling and picked up a camera, I had done model tests and paid photographers to photograph me. And I had gone through the headshot process as an actor. So the top photographers in the city, I think I paid like 500 bucks for my first headshot session with this guy. And I was like, this is this is good. So when I picked up a camera, I didn't, at that time, I would, didn't think I'd ever pick up a camera, but I was like, wow, 500 bucks, this is expensive, but I wanna do it. I really like this guy's work. And that's how it started. It got my brain kind of moving on. Maybe I'll pick up a camera and do this. When I did pick up a camera, I was shooting film and I was like, I just want to get my film paid for. I just want, I don't want to, you know, I don't know how much money I'm going to make. I was a model actor, bartender guy. I got out of the bar and I picked up the camera to stay out of the bar, but I still was concentrating on modeling and acting. So I was trying to make that work. Although I wasn't talented enough to be an actor, a good one anyway. And, uh, my looks were fading. So <laughs> Come on. it was, it was a good move. It was a good move. Um, but I started charging for a roll of film, which I was shooting, uh, 
shooting medium format back then and i got a medium format film camera so i mean we we're talking like 20 bucks for a roll of film i shoot a couple of rolls of film see if they'd give me 20 bucks just to cover it and then i remember starting to shoot these models and i was like how am i gonna i, I wish i knew what i first i probably charge 100 bucks or something like that when i first started I do, however, remember when I started a headshot business and that was in 2002. So I was shooting for two years and I had started a headshot. I was going into the headshot industry and I knew that the average cost of a headshot in New York around that time was probably 400 bucks. There were photographers that were charging a thousand um, for their sessions and most, I would say the average was 400. So I was like, okay, I'm just starting. I'm going to start below average. I took out an ad in a newspaper that was $315 a week. And I was like, okay, 315 bucks. That's too much. I'm not going to, I didn't feel, I think one of the things with pricing, when you, if you're watching this and you're thinking about what you're going to charge somebody, I, I'm very into um, when they pay me something, the value that they get out of it is more than what they paid me in cash. So I was like, I don't know that my shots are worth $315 at that point, even though they definitely were looking back at them. I was pretty good right off the bat, you know, <laughs> who knew? Uh, but I was like, 250 sounds good. I feel more comfortable with that. And I always have, the, I have this quote that I've said over the years and people have always pinged me on it and been like, what did you just say? And the quote is this, if your pricing doesn't scare you, it's too low. So your pricing should scare you a little bit. Um, maybe not a lot, but a little bit. I've been scared by my pricing a bunch. I've actually been really scared on big jobs that I got, but luckily the art buyer in charge of those jobs just said, Hey, you're getting paid this. And I'd be like, okay, you know, and those were like 20, I mean, the biggest job I've done a couple $20,000 jobs and that's about it. But I bid out on a $7,500,000 job once and I didn't get it. I was bummed, but, um, the industry is so varied depending on what you're doing. If you're going to be a photographer, like my studio, people come in and book me for a session. I don't do much commercial photography, although I'll take it if it comes my way. Most of it, uh, the end, the person I'm photographing is the person paying me, which is way different than an ad agency paying me. Although I started out working with an ad agency just because the art buyer at the ad agency was a friend of mine and I got really lucky and I got some great jobs. And she had the pricing down and I didn't even have to think about it. So it was like a no brainer. So the pricing is one of the hardest things you'll do as a photographer. If you want to go from an amateur or hobbyist to professional, the, the, the barrier to entry is getting paid for what you produce. So you have to get paid for what you do if you want to call yourself a professional. And in order to do that, you've got to figure out what the value is on, on it. So I was in the process of that and I thought $315 for the ad. If I get one person, I only paid, I only lost 65 bucks. If I get two people, I made some money. So that's all I cared about. I kept that ad running for like years. It ended up propelling my career. I think the first week I might've gotten one person. The next week I might not have gotten anybody. The next week I got like four people. I was like, whoa, this is working. I can keep it running. Um, but when I, when back then, overhead was lower. I was shooting out of my apartment. There's no excuse uh, where you need to shoot. I mean, I don't think people ask me all the time, do I need a studio right off the bat? And I'm like, no, I shot out of my apartment for years. I actually didn't get a studio for four years and I was already making, well, I mean, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, I think within out of my apartment. I don't, I don't even think I had the studio and I was already had hit a couple hundred thousand maybe. Um, yeah, you had this uh, beautiful window light in your apartment. Yeah, I, when I got the apartment, I was just looking for a southern facing window and I plopped my butt on the windowsill. Another quote I say is never underestimate the power of natural light. So if you think you have to spend all this money to go pro, that's not true either. So I built my business on natural light and I started that way and I, and I stayed that way until I moved into a studio without any windows. So yeah, you can buy all the gear and you can gussy it all up and you can have a studio or a apartment or a house full of crap. Uh, but do you need it all? And I mean, as you develop your craft and develop your look, there are certain looks like my look is my look because of my light. And I don't think I could do it quite with natural. light. I could still do pretty well with natural. light. I could still run my business with natural light, but I like the, the obviously like 
well, I design the lights I work with now. So of course I'm going to use the lights I designed. So, um, but yeah, so that's it. But, um, yeah, you know, the old saying, all the gear, no idea. I think it's funny that people still believe that better gear produces better photos. It's, uh, there's exceptions, of course, if you're a sport photographer, you need bigger lenses, da, 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 da. But generally speaking, I have never had a client that walked in and looked at the label that is on the lights or whatever. All they care about is the result. That's true. I mean, I went through that period of just thinking I needed, I would, when I was modeling, I was watching what photographers were using and they were all using pro photo at the time. I was like, I need pro photo lights. So, uh, what I did was every, all the money that I made with my camera, I invested back into my gear. So now I've got a closet full of gear that sits there and I, there's stuff that's in there that I haven't moved in. I don't even know how long. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what, what did I need that for? Uh, I do try and dig into my closet and pull out a lot, a lot of the stuff, but there's a lot of stuff in there that I just can't seem to get rid of that. Um, that I'm like, I don't think I'll ever, I don't know that I'll ever use that again. Um, so you have to be careful. I mean, I think doing it the, the right way. I mean, everybody's in a different state of affairs with, with their camera and their art and where they are in this trajectory of building a business. So if you are looking to go professional or if you're a professional already trying to and you're watching this and you're trying to just tweak your your pricing um i think it's just important you have to do it the whole time and again you have to constantly what i did was so i'll just finish the the story with with what i was doing i started at 250 and i raised it 25 to 50 dollars every every once in a while for a while and then and then i had this it got up to like $550. I moved into a studio. Uh, I don't, I, I could probably look back and see what it was when I moved into the studio. But anyway, um, I remember moving into the studio. I had this casting director call me and start sending me all her clientele. And she was awesome. And this one woman came in and met with me and did a consultation, sat down and I told her my rate and she left and it just didn't go well. You know how you, when you meet somebody, it just doesn't yeah. feel right. Sometimes it didn't feel right. So I called the casting. I said, that didn't feel right. I don't know if she's going to book me. She goes, she's not booking you. I was like, what? She goes, no, nah, she's not booking you. I said, I was like, why? She goes, because she's the type of person. This is also on the type of client you want to attract. She's the type of person that already paid the thousand dollar headshot photographer to do their headshots. That photographer screwed it up. I've been sending everybody to you because you're better, but you're like half the price and everybody thinks something's wrong because you're too cheap. You got to raise your rates. And at that moment, if I was smart, I would have put my rate to a thousand dollars, but not me. I had to be like, oh my gosh, well, okay, I have to raise my rate. So then I went back to the, every month I was busy, I'm raising it 50 bucks. So it went from, I think it was 550 at the time, went to 600, went to 650, went to 700, all the way up to a thousand. I got to a thousand and I was like, I'm here. How much money did I leave on the table getting there? You know? Um, and I always coach photographers on raising their rates and making a decision and raising it like that. And, and a lot of them have thanked me over the years for the amount of money that they've made. Uh, I went, once I got to a thousand, cause the top ones were at a thousand, nobody was really above that. I was like, I'm going to go 1050. So I'm more expensive than everybody. <laughs> and then I was 1050 for a while. And then I was like, I, if they're going to pay 1050, they're going to pay 1100. Let me go to 1100. And I kept it there for a really long time. So, I think that I was constantly trying to figure this out. The thing that I didn't realize, I was leaving a bunch of money on the table because of things I didn't know. I just hadn't been in the industry long enough. I didn't know sales methods. I was a photographer. There's different hats that you have to have as a photographer. And if you're running this as a business, your business hat has to go on. Um, and I'm not that into business. Like I'm not looking at my bills and doing all that. I just want to get paid something that I feel my work is worth. And hopefully that adds up to something that covers all my bills. Luckily I'm living in New York city, raised twin daughters, have a really nice apartment and a phenomenal studio, um, and make a really good living as a, as a photographer to the point where I got audited by the, by the IRS here in the U S and the guy's like, I only pulled Jim because I never saw a photographer make this much. And I was, my accountant was like, they were trying to charge me. Well, I don't want to get into it, but they were trying to charge me a lot of money. And, uh, and he was just like, I, I've never seen a photographer come in with this income. And my, my, so my account, like, I got to go in and meet with them. 
I was like, do I have to go? And she's like, no, let me just do it. So I put a set aside half of the money because I was like, if she can cut it in half, I might be okay. Let's hope so. Anyway, she goes in, she gets out of the meeting, she calls me and she goes, uh, guess what? I was like, what, how much is it? And I had put half aside. She said it's X and I was like, what? And it was like a 10th of what they wanted. I was like, they, she said, they just wanted to see everything. They just couldn't believe that you were doing so well now. The reason why I was doing so well was not 100% photography. I decided to diversify um, as I was building my shooting business. I was building other businesses on the side. So I have lights. I have my coaching program through the Headshot Crew. I have workshops. I do workshops all over the world. I was in Australia uh, when COVID hit and I was doing a workshop in Melbourne in Australia. I had it. I mean, Sydney, sorry. And I had it set up and I had to fly back here. So hopefully I will be back down there and I will be seeing some of you in one of my workshops sometime soon. But that being said, I had everything like that because I was able to do that because I had enough momentum with the photography so that I could actually put my focus other places, which which I think is something that you need to do. But let's get you rocking and rolling with your with your pricing now so that you can do that down the road or you can add it, your photography hopefully is going to be another source of income for you. I have multiple sources of income. So if that's the case, then you got to be charged for your time and your time's valuable. So you got to figure out how much time it's going to take you in front of the camera. Now you don't have to do packages according to time. Some people do, some people don't. I don't really time my sessions at all. The only reason I use time is because of the, the way I structure my packages. So I thought this is the way I did it. So I had a package and I used to shoot actors and I, and I wasn't that good of a director. I was good, but I remember actors are a tough crowd, especially if you're shooting headshots of actors, like the, the pressure's on them because this is their calling card. So they get all freaked out and then they're spending money on it. And you're, and you're actually photographing the person that's paying you. It's like a big deal. So they get all stressed out. And I remember it would take me an hour sometimes just to warm one of them up. So I was like, I won't shoot anybody for less than an hour. So you have to do my full package, which is 1100 bucks. If you ever come back, you've already worked with me. I can warm you up quicker. I'm going to give you a really deep discount. This was one of the best decisions I make. So think about this. You charge whatever you're going to charge for your clients to come in. If they ever come back, you give them a deep discount. I charged, I had enough leeway in the packaging to do a really good discount. So I did 1100 to come in and it's selling point at the beginning of the session too. If they ever come back for the rest of their careers, 375 is what I did. Okay. I had people coming back every day, every week. I was like, this is amazing. The, the package coming back, I just would spend like an hour with them and the other package I'd spend two and a half hours with them. So it was, it wasn't, it was worked out about the same with time wise. So I did that for years. And then what happens is you do something, you have to restructure, you have to continue to grow. You have to, every month you're busy, you have to push your envelope. So over the years I've changed a, a bunch, but right now, if you go to, you can see what my rates are. If you go to peterhurley.com forward slash rates, you can see my rates. I have an online scheduler there. You can see my schedule. You can see if I'm busy or not, which I don't really care because I got my multiple source of income. I'm busy. I have so much to do that if I shoot, that's great. If I don't shoot you, I also have an assistant that shoots for me. So we're splitting up. So what we're doing is if somebody doesn't like my rates because they're pretty high in the industry, uh, my assistant charges half. So they'll still, we keep the studio busy. She's working, which is great. And, uh, and I get to sit in my little back room and get my, get my other source of income going. But, um, I charge a thousand dollars now for somebody to step in front of my camera. The difference between the 1100 then and the thousand dollars now is that the 1100 then was for like two and a half hours of shooting. The, the thousand now it says on my site, it's a mini session and they get a half hour with me. How can I do that now? And I couldn't do it then. I became a better director. Hmm. So now that I'm a better director. I can charge more with less time. So now I get like, I get people chilled out and amped up from the first shot I take. I used to take that shot and they'd be stiff and uncomfortable. And then I would take more and then I would bring them to the computer. I say, he see how you were stiff here and now you're better here and you're, we're going, you know? And then I was like, screw that. I'm going to just get them their best shot of their life 
from the first snap of the shutter. So I really wait. I really coach them until I see what I like. And then I hit it. And nine times out of 10, they're like, oh, oh my gosh. So what did that do? It gives them confidence in me that the rest of the session is going to be great. They did a good job in spending the thousand bucks. Now, this is the difference between my 1100 package and my thousand dollar package. And this was a tweak that I did in August of 2019. I'll never forget because uh, a photographer who I coached went into a new market in the United States, into Arizona, in this town called Scottsdale near Phoenix. And he opened a headshot business. And in the first two years, he broke $200,000 in, in the, just headshots. And he called me and he's like, He's like, I mean, we're really good friends. And and he's like, he did that. I was like, how the heck are you doing? What is going on? Like in a new market, walks into it because he moved from LA to that market, started it and, and was making that. He said, I've got a sales method. I was like, what? So he had trained with, uh, he had sold cars for Bentley. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess Bentley's owned by Audi. So he was in the UK and they sent him to Germany to learn this sales training. And then he went back to the UK and was selling Bentleys, I guess. And then he moved to the United States and picked up a camera. Or was shoot, he was shooting for Daily Mail UK, I think, in, in when he started in the UK. And then he moved over to LA and he was shooting uh, for them over there. Well, he didn't. He, he found me, never thought about headshots, took my headshot workshop, decided to start shooting headshots, and then developed the sales method based off of what he had learned. So he tried to convince me to do it. And I was so set in my ways. I was like, I'm not changing my pricing. <laughs> so this is the way it worked. Yeah, this is the way it works. So people would come in, they pay the 1100 bucks, right? They'd leave and they'd get a proofing site with all the shots that I decided to keep. Let's say I shot 500 shots. I narrowed it. I got rid of all the closed eyes and all the bad expressions. And I narrowed it down to say 200. Mm -hmm. I left them on a proofing gallery. They went through the proofing site, ordered from my retoucher, paid the retoucher, the retouching and off they went with their shots. And he's like, why are you doing that? You're leaving so much money on the table. I was like, what? He goes, yeah, that's your art. You're not, you're, you're just selling the session. You're not selling your art. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, why don't you do this? Why don't you charge them the same for the session, but don't give them anything with it. Tell them they have to pay for each image that they, they want. And then if they don't buy it during the session, you're going to just delete them all. They're only going to get the ones they decide to buy. And. I was like, I don't want to go through that. I don't, I mean, I shoot so much and I don't want to spend an extra time sitting down with them. He said, just try it. So in August of 2019, it got a little slow and he was twisting my arm and I was like, all right, let me try this. I'll just change it. It's just hard to change your rates when, when you're busy because you've got so many people booking and then you got to remember, okay, this person booked me on the old rate. Now I've got the new rate. This person didn't know about the old rate. They, wait, this person, when did they book? I'm not quite sure. I don't know what's going on. And then it's like, Pfft. so I had to do it when it was slow. So it got slow. So I was like, all right, let me start this. So I sat people down. A couple things happened. One is I really paid more attention to my work because I was like, wait a minute, if they're going to actually buy images now, that means I've got to give them enough variety with expression, background, lighting that they buy, feel like they should buy more images, which is great. Uh, it's good for me. It's good for them. So I became a better shooter because I was more aware of what they might need or what they might end up using. Whereas before I just throw a proofing site up and I never know what they ended up using. I never knew. And I was never in charge of the retouching. So it would go off. It coincided with my retoucher retiring. I had worked with him since, you know, I started in 2002 and I just felt like, you know, he's one of my close friends. So I was like, I gave him everything. But when he retired and, and I was like, let me bring it in house. Now my assistant does the retouching. I review everything, which I never did before. And we sell the images on the spot to the client right from the get go. What happened was miraculous. Um, this is called the TNT method. And if you go to headshotcrew.com forward slash tutorials, you'll see it there. It's a, it's a tutorial that Tony did. I did it with him because after I started selling like this, I was like, everybody needs to know this method. Um, so there's different techniques in there with how you talk to your client, how you behave with your client, how you help clients that are, you know, some people are very decisive and you have to give them run of the mill and kind of let them do their thing. And some people are indecisive and you have to help them. 
obviously. So there's different techniques to use in that in to determine that. But I've had uh, the the cap on my income for a session was eleven hundred dollars in the past. That was it. When I went to this method, and my my smallest session is a thousand dollars now. That's just to come in the dorm for me to shoot. And now it's $150 for each image they buy. So they come in and they pay me a thousand. And then if they want one image, I'm already at 1050. So I'm already making, well, I got to pay the retoucher, but I'm still making more than what I was making before if they buy one picture, right? Uh, I've had people buy 45 pictures in a session. And my, my full, I also, so I do the mini sessions so that people can't get in front of my camera unless it's a thousand dollars. You have to value your work and value your sessions and value what you do. And you have to price yourself accordingly and be a little scared. So a thousand for that half hour session. Now I always under promise and over deliver. It's, my assistant shakes her head every time I say, yeah, I'm gonna shoot for a half hour. The only time I shoot for the half hour is when a corporate person comes in and they're like, oh, I love that shot. That's great, I'll see it, perfect. And they walk out the door and I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. Most of the time it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't time it. I don't look at my watch. I'm a photographer. I only schedule one or two a day at the maximum. So it's like not no skin off my back if I shoot more because if they buy more, plus I enjoy it and I practice my craft of direction. So I just mess with people till I figure out my newest form of direction with them and, and try different lighting setups and different backgrounds and do everything. I don't care. I love it. I don't feel like I'm working. I don't work. We're photographers. We have the best job in the world. You put somebody in front of your camera, you press the button, they pay you. It's awesome. What am I going to do? Slow down? So... But it makes them more comfortable knowing they're paying the the cheaper session, so it's fine. And I don't the the more expensive session is double the price. It's about an hour and a half of shooting, so I don't ever really go over an hour of shooting with somebody that does the smaller one, unless I feel like unless I really am into it. But so this the next session's two thousand. If they want a portrait, the second that they say, okay, I, a headshot to me is from chest up not half body, chest up. Like my headshots are close. Like the second they say they need to see more than their chest, like just to hear half body. Okay, that's a portrait session. Those start at, well, the fee is 3,000, 150 an image later. So that's New York pricing at the top of the game. I'm probably one of the most expensive headshot photographers out there. If somebody's charging more than that, more power to them, uh, I don't know how busy they are. You know, I like to stay fairly busy. Um, but again, I'm running a bunch of different businesses, so I don't have that pressure. When I was 100% shooting, my only source of income was shooting. I had to pay a studio, I had to pay my rent, I had to pay my, my health insurance, I had to pay this, I had to pay that. I had an overhead of living in New York with twin daughters. That's when I had to, I had to really be certain of my pricing and what I was doing. Now I have the the leeway to say, these are my rates. If you come in front of my camera, fantastic. If you don't, I got a million things to do today, you know, but that's because I created that. So I suggest that, yes, you get your shooting up, up and running, but that you have other things going on. So it takes the pressure off of you trying to sell a client on a session. So when people call me, if they want to book with me, great. If they don't, I'm also looking for the people that want the best. Like I want to provide the best, you've got to be willing to go, this guy's the best and I'm going to pay him for it. And I'm going to have a Peter Hurley shot, which is going to be a big deal for them. It's an event to get in front of my camera. I don't take it lightly. I don't just willy nilly press the button. So I was on a trip a while ago with a bunch of bunch of guys and I'm friends with this guy and he runs this group and he invited me on this trip. So I went and these guys, one guy was like, hey, uh, if I get a camera, you know, would you, uh, I need a new headshot for LinkedIn. Would you mind just snapping a few? And I said, well, if you get a camera, why don't you give it to that guy to snap a few? <laughs> You're not going to catch me doing it. I'm a professional. I was like, you want to come to my studio in New York and you want to pay me the, my rate? I'll give you some sort of friends and family deal. That's the, the other thing. It's either free. It's either discounted because they're a returning client or they're a friend of somebody or maybe, but I have those set. They're a kid under under 17 or under, I think I give a deal to, or it's full price. Like there is no negotiating. You can't go, oh, it's a thousand. How about, can you do 800, Peter? Yeah, no. 
No, I can't do it. As a matter of fact, I can't press the button for 800. My finger doesn't doesn't it doesn't listen to my brain when I put the camera in my hands, and it just won't go down. I don't know why. Yeah, it's it's called. It's, it's a thousand dollars for that for the for the press of the shutter. <laughs> I guess muscle memory is linked to expectations. Absolute. Absolutely. Anyway, I rambled, and Stefan hasn't even talked the whole time. I've been rambling, guys. So I hope you're getting something out of it. But let's let's uh, we we gotta we gotta dig into it we gotta dig into it there was no ramble i think it's it's very very smart because it feels a little bit like going back in the olden days you know when we had film and we had to develop the film and then we had those archival sheets and the client marked which which photos they wanted to print and of course each print costed money the same should apply for digital photos nowadays we should separate sessions and individual uh, products, if you want to call them individual photos. Now, the other thing that I think is is important to mention is that there's a lot of people undercutting the price in in various industries, which I think it's a sad thing, because it it affects everybody in this industry. Well, I find this interesting. The the um because we talk about it a lot on the Headshot Crew because we have photographers in similar markets that are competing against themselves that I coach. I coach the same photographers in the same market who are pricing against each other. And we there's this quote that I love and it's the amateurs compete, professionals create. Yeah. So I get people not to be as competitive against each other as to let's look at the market and let's elevate it. Let's elevate the pricing in the market. So what happens is these people get started and they go for the, you know, the $99 discount or the $49 discount or, oh, flash sale, 30 bucks, come on in, you know, and it just really damages the market to the point where I was on a call the other day and this guy had this happening in his town. So he called the photographer doing, he said, there was a young kid, he got started, he was doing all these cheap rates. And all of a sudden I noticed they were, people were going there. I called the guy up. I said, if you raise your rates, I'll pay you 200 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy was like, what? So he paid him 200 bucks and the guy raised his rates. That guy made more money. He gave him 200 bucks. I guess he gave him 200 bucks a week or something to keep it that way. And uh, they both made more money. So that's um, hilarious. I, I loved it. I was like, that is awesome. That guy's got some balls. Oh my gosh. Um, but that's what happens. So what you have to do a lot of you are probably eager to get started in it. You're looking at your market and go, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just getting started and charge it. You may be a better photographer than the people charging, but you'll go undercut them because you want to get started. Um, what that does is it hurts the whole industry and it's going to limit the amount that you can make in the long run by cr by lowering the bar in your in your area for the pricing that's, that's available. I mean, it is art. You want to be competitive, but you also want to, I mean, the the thousand dollar headshot was not created by me. Some other photographer here, I believe, uh, I know who they were. Or at least I know the ones that were a thousand when I started. Um, created that, and I can only thank them because that was where the bar was created. So you have to create and elevate the bar of wherever locale you're in. The other thing is that I can be on a plane and I can be in Australia in 24 hours. I know because I did it. Um, I can be anywhere in the United States in seven, six, six hours, I think, five or six hours. If you're talented, you can go anywhere in the world with your photography. You can. You have to believe it and you have to work towards it and you have to go for it. And, and uh, maybe you need an agent or maybe you need something to bring you there. Obviously, it's not happening at the moment, but it could happen down the road. Um, so you have to realize that your talent is everything. Your talent gets you paid. Your talent allows you to travel. Your talent allows you to bring your art to the world. Um, so keep that in mind, like you don't, don't necessarily have to look in wherever you're sitting right now, but if that's where you're sitting and that's where you're starting, you start out there and you try and elevate the, the, and educate the consumer as to why you're worth what you should be paid instead of having other photographers fight and drive prices down. You guys should all be in cahoots together to try and drive the price up in the area. Now, that's not going to work with every human being because some people just, you know, are competitive and aren't going to want to even talk to you about it. <laughs> but um, if you can get around that and uh, you can really grow as a, as a whole. I had big competitors when I was 
you know, back in the trenches trying to build my headshot business that did not like me, did not like that I was blasting through the pecking order and taking a lot of the business, did not like it at all. And I ran into one of them recently, and this was, we're talking like 15 years ago when we were really duking it out against each other. And I thanked him, I was like, look, you created this for, like we both are very successful in what we did outside beyond what we were doing on a daily basis with the headshot photography. We both grew and went other directions, but the, the, the healthy challenge of building a business in the market that was tough knowing that we were two of the best out there um, and, and driving pricing and driving sales and getting people in front of our cameras was something that, that this guy happened to push me towards. So I thanked him for it. I was like, I wouldn't be, you know, where I was without the push that you probably gave me. I don't know if either one of us would be. And it was really nice to, to have that conversation. Well, there's another way to look at it. Let's say you walk onto a Toyota car yard. You have a certain expectation in terms of car and in terms of price. So it probably comes with four wheels. It has a radio and the windows hopefully open. And then you go across the street, there's BMW, and you still get four wheels, windows that open, and the radio. They get from point A to point B, just the same. Correct. And now you're walking up the road to Ferrari, and guess what? Four wheels, radio, and windows, which hopefully open. But there's a huge difference in price. Now, as photographer, we cannot expect to charge Ferrari prices if we are not even on a Toyota level. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with the Toyota, but I think you understand the principle. You have to create that brand for yourself first. Now, that means that you have to create a portfolio that shows consistency, and it has to show a certain style. Anyway, now I'm rambling on. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So let's switch gear. Let's talk about something that I hear quite often especially from photographers who just get into the game, which is this TFP, time for print. Do you think that's something that people should do or something that people should completely stay away from it? Yeah, I never did it. I mean, I never I, I never really did that. Um, I mean, I guess I did it at the beginning of my career because I was a model and I was pulling the guys out of the agency and shooting them and just, maybe I was just charging them for film. But I don't really think that... Um, uh, I mean, I guess if you're going for fashion and you need a model, like I shoot headshots and every there's every face on the planet that's outside my window is 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 good for me. I mean, I don't need anybody that's particularly good looking. I just need interesting looking humans. And every single human on the planet is interesting to me. I think the human face is the most interesting thing to look at. So do I need people? No. Would I? I don't shoot free anymore. I don't have time. I don't want to. I don't do it unless... Like maybe, um, I think like I have Miss Universe coming in on Thursday and I'm shooting her for free because I want to do it live on the internet and she's got a million followers on Instagram and I want her to go live with me and I haven't laid all this on her yet, but she's a really good friend. I think it's going to be fine. Um, but that's the thing. She's a really good friend and I've shot her a number of times having Miss Universe in my portfolio is probably wonderful and it makes sense. Plus, I love her. Like, we're really close. We're really good friends. So I have basically taken uh, her and said, you know, she changes her look a lot. I'm like, I'll take care of you. I'll shoot it. And my, and my makeup artist loves her too. So we just like experimenting with her and, and working with her. So I'll do it for free. Nothing. I'm doing it for free. Mm. Um, you know, B&H is coming in. They're going to be here while I'm doing it, which is great. So we're going to be um, live on B&H's feed too. It's going to be a big event. It's coming and it's, oh my gosh, it's like Thursday. I didn't even think about it. I'm not even prepping for it. I'm just going to do it. Um, but that's great for publicity for me. Uh, and uh, that makes sense. Yes. So, but I, I mean, these models ask me all the time. I get it all the time on my Instagram that people slipping into my DMs. Hey, I really want to work with you. 
blah, 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 blah. And they could be, they're gorgeous. I'm like, some of them are like, I'm like, that's, this person would be amazing, you know, if I wanted to shoot for free, but I don't do that. So I just tell them, I don't, I don't do that. The only time I do is if I'm doing a workshop, I bring people into a workshop, but I don't shoot them. I have the students shoot them. Hmm. So people think, so I'll say, hey, if you want to, if you want to come in, you can shoot, come into a workshop, but I'm not photographing you. Like, no. And then they come in and they always ask me, will you photograph? I'm like, no, I told you I wasn't going to photograph you. The students are photographing you. I'll set it up. I'll watch them. You're going to get great stuff, but I'm not doing it. It's just the way, the way that it works. So um, if your portfolio is lacking and you're, you think that you need somebody in there and they look incredible and you just think if they said, yes, I'll be able to shoot them, that would be phenomenal. You go ask them. And you do it and you do it for free and you do it to get them in your portfolio. I get that. But eventually your portfolio should be full of people like that. And you don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. The other thing that really is bad is that is that photographers put everybody they shoot in their portfolio. Like they're either not shooting enough or they're just not picky enough. Like a lot of times I'm like, why are you, why are you pressuring yourself to put everybody, you know, how many people that I shoot go, I've shot. I don't even know. I, I don't know. 30, 40, 50,000 faces. I mean, I, I don't think I, I barely put anybody in my portfolio. Now I'm starting to change. I want to put more people in my portfolio of my recent work, but I like to get in my portfolio is like, it's like a huge thing. Like I don't, I don't, I don't put anybody in there. Like I, I mean, I'm going to shoot I've shot this Miss Universe that's coming in a bunch and a bunch of shots never made it to my portfolio because I just never put them in there. Hmm. So eventually you get to the point where you're just like, you know, and it's silly. I've shot celebrities I haven't put in my portfolio. I don't know. But that's a problem on my end. That's because if I'm busy, I'm like, I'm always like justifying. I got other things to do than do that. I'm too busy, which is good. So, but I thought during COVID, I'll sort that out. I'll get my portfolio full of all the celebrities that I've shot that I should have had in there. And I was like, and that never happened. So I got to get it together. So I'm just fed. But if you don't have that problem and you need people, there has to be a point where you look at your portfolio and you go, you know what? I don't need to shoot for free anymore. I've got these people. I've got this demographic covered. I've got this covered. I've got that covered. It also depends what you want to shoot. Like me shooting headshots. I don't need one model. I don't need anybody. I mean, I, I'm just getting people and eventually their, their, their level of attractiveness is dependent upon my picture. Right. Or, or, and sometimes people are just super gorgeous and you want them. But if I have that person already, I got Miss universe. What do I need this next person for? You know, um, that kind of thing. So you got to look at the diversity in your portfolio, figure out what you need. You know, if you, it depends what you want to shoot. If you only want to shoot hot chicks in bikinis, then you're probably going to need to do some TFP because you might not find them coming in your door, but some photographer, that's all they shoot. I don't shoot that stuff. Yeah, so I well, don't need models telling me. Yeah. You know? Look, I totally understand. It's a very alluring to, you know, photograph young, sexy women, but reality is that will never support your business. Now, there's exceptions. Of course, you will always see those one in a million who produce these sort of photos for some exquisite magazines. But most girls who do this, unless they're high-end professional models, they expect to shoot for free because their boyfriend told them you <laughs> can be a model and, ooh, 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 and they expect to be paid or, or at least get photos for free. So that's just reality. You have to find your niche where there's actually money to be made. The whole world needs headshots, as example. Corporate uh, businesses need portraits. Advertising needs portraits. And then there's events and, and weddings and all of that where there's actually money to be made. Shooting half-naked women on the beach. It may be fun, maybe not so much at our age yeah. anymore. But anyway back on route if people want to learn more from you let's talk a little bit about the headshot crew and uh, everything you do to help people get off the ground yeah um so the headshot crew is a platform that i started so the premise was this i was shooting in new york i was a thousand dollars people would say i need a headshot and they'd call me and i'd be like yeah i can help you it's a thousand bucks click and they'd hang up I'd be like <laughs> what that person needs a headshot how am i going to give it to him 
and I was like, let me train somebody to charge less than me. And we did that. We brought this guy in and he started shooting. And then I, I opened up in LA and we started doing these sessions there. And I was like, wait, if I can do it in New York and LA, why don't I do it just all over the world? And I'll start training photographers. So I started the headshot crew and I started training people with an online coaching platform. You can join, you can try it and you can see if you like it get involved and uh, and give it a shot. You can give it a shot for free and you can come in and, and give it a, and try it. And then it's 25 bucks a month if you stay. And if you stay and you get 15 shots by me, you can become an associate and that's where we give referrals. It's a referral engine and that's where you get in our photographer search. And then the most talented photographers get jobs directly from me. So I just gave a job to a guy in Sydney um because we needed a photographer there we did a job we're doing corporate global corporate companies through this agency that i created that that feeds off of the headshot crew associate photographers it's called headshot booker so it's an agency and what we do is we take these global companies that have offices all over the world and we try to match our look to that company so the so we just did a job where we had somebody in london somebody in moscow somebody in sydney somebody in new, obviously new york chicago a lot around the us la and we shot the job for the company so it's a one-stop shop so we need photographers globally to be able to do this kind of work and i'm always looking for new talent uh that being said i coach people up so if you have if you like photographing people and you don't have a headshot component to your work where you can make money that doesn't make sense to me. So I could teach you how to make money with headshot photography. We could show you the packages we could do. We 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 recommend certain lighting setups that I need you to be able to do if I'm gonna feed you jobs because if there was better lighting than what I do, I would be doing it for headshots and I don't think there is. Otherwise I would have discovered it by now, I hope. Uh, so the recipe works uh, and I coach people toward that recipe. And we have photographers all over the place. I don't know how many I have in Australia. I got a ton. Um, I love teaching you guys and uh, and I love coming down. So I got to get down there again. I really do. I'm really bummed that I had to come back because of COVID. So I'm looking forward to the next time I get down there. But in the meantime, I'm live on and we've got photographers over there. I think it's um, 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So I know it's really early in the morning. Um, but we have people coming on and uh and joining me live i'm live tuesdays wednesdays and thursdays in new york uh 4 p.m eastern so each week for the people that that sign up but give it a shot try it i'm sure he'll put a link in for you to give it a shot and uh, i'd love to see you inside yeah absolutely i think it's, it's it's super helpful for a lot of people i think what we need is this brutally honest feedback and you know critique of our work absolutely um it's funny that i named tuesday's crewcast tough love tuesdays because i don't let people slide i mean i coach people at the level they're at it doesn't matter if you're a beginner if you're a working pro making a ton of money i'm going to make you more i'm going to elevate your game if you're a beginner and never shot a headshot in your life i'm going to elevate your game it doesn't matter where you are on the spectrum it matters the work you're producing and how we can how we can make it better so little tweaks for people that are already running a successful business make a huge deal and then the learning curve of people who just started is like through the roof, it goes straight up. So you're already gonna be avoiding mistakes that you would have previously made without this information. And there, in the Headshot Crew, there's over, I think I have over like 300 videos of me doing what I do and how to do it better. It's, it's amazing, it's, a, it's an awesome resource. Yes, absolutely. I put all the links in the description below so everyone can find it very easily. And you should definitely look into this if you're interested in portraiture and in headshots, especially. Now, I've taken so much of your time, so greatly appreciated. Any plans for tonight? No, I just got to go home, get a meal and then get back here and get some work done. Now, why does that sound familiar? I guess <laughs> that's what we do. If we want to be successful, we put the hours in, but it's just fun. Oh my gosh, I don't, I never feel like I'm working. I love this. Well, once again, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you again. Appreciate you having me on. And for you all who watch this, thank you so much for hanging with us for such a long time. Look after yourself and as always, go out and create something awesome.